Hey, good evening, everybody. It's March 15th. It's Monday night, 7 p.m. This is episode one of season two of FCA Coach's Corner. Billy Graham said it best when he said, one coach can impact more youth in one year than most people will their entire lifetime. Coach said are the two most powerful, influential words on any campus, any playground, any court, any field in the world. And at FCA, we take that very seriously. And at Hendersonville High School, Coach said is a very special thing in the men's basketball program because Coach said is so impactful for the young people in that program. And we are just honored to have Coach Marvin Featherstone on here as our guest tonight. He's the head boys basketball coach at Hendersonville High School. Just made a magical run to the state championship game. We're going to hear a little bit about that. We're going to hear a little bit about faith. And Coach Featherstone, man, thank you so much for coming on here tonight. Thank you. It's a, a privilege and an honor to get a chance to speak with you on the FCA Coach's Corner. Hey, let, let's start out. Hey, tell us a little bit about your family. We want to hear about Marvin Featherstone's family. Uh, <clears throat> we're a really close-knit family, uh, a kind of a blended family. I have a couple stepbrother. Uh, well, I had a stepbrother and a couple stepsisters. Um, I have a half sister that lives in Florida, and I have a another half sister that passed away. Um, but we're a really close family, and you know we we do a lot together. And you know I've I've been I guess going through a lot lately with both of my parents battling cancer and, you know, and it's been a blessing to just still have both of them still here, you know, to witness me make it to a state championship this year. Yeah, that that's exciting. I know, you know, I share that with you, you know, my mom and dad both passed and I, you know, I was never fortunate enough. I, I'm kind of jealous. I grew up with you. I was never fortunate enough to reach that title game, but I, I know that, uh, you know, mom and dad would have been proud if I would have ever gotten them one. So I know me as your friend and I know the whole community is just super proud of that. And while we're on that subject, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about why you got into coaching. Coach Featherstone, what made you get into this crazy profession coaching? Um, <clears throat> well, when I first got out of the military, um, Mr. Wilkins had called me and asked, you know, I got a ISS position, you know, and you may get a chance to coach and, you know, I wasn't sure how I would enjoy coaching. And, you know, I got into it and, you know, it was great that I could give back to the kids in the community that I grew up in. And, you know, it's a, I guess it's a dream to be able to coach some of the kids of the people that I went to school with. And, you know, and it, the more that I did it, the more I enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I don't think I was, cut out to do anything else now. Wow, you sound, sound similar to the story I had. And I know I was, for those of you watching that might not know, Coach Featherstone and I grew up together, actually coached football together. Coach Featherstone has been a three-sport coach a lot of years. He's actually coached football. Then he'll do the juggling act at the end of football when basketball starts and then actually coach track and field. So for a man to coach three sports like that, you, you sure know where his heart is. Um, this is probably what everybody wants to talk about the most on, on this coach's corner. I just want you to talk about this magical run that you had undefeated season all the way up to the state championship game. Could you just speak, just brag on your team, talk about however you want to word this coach, talk about that magical run for us. Um, you know, it's been a, a group that has been building on, on this type of year since they were in third grade. I mean, they started in travel ball and they would go, and they get the life beat out of them, and they come back happy. We got beat by 50 today, and, you know, and as the years went on, those teams were were still all-star teams, but it was guys that were going to be one team together, and they continued to improve year in and year out, and, you know, and they kept building, kept building, and I guess by the time they got to high school, they were beating those teams that were beating them by 40 and 50, and, you know, and it was a special group, man. You know, I had seven seniors, you know, that were playing since they were in the third grade, you know. And, you know, it, it really showed later in the season as, you know, you know, I looked to my senior leadership, but I also had some really, really outstanding 
underclassmen as well, you know, and, you know, the guys that didn't play a lot, they were just as enthused about winning as if they were on the floor. And, you know, when you look back as a coach and you see your guys that's not playing as much, hooping and hollering like they're in the game, it makes – it makes it a special environment for you as a coach. And, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was a, almost like I was in a dream going through this with these guys and it was a outstanding journey. And, you know, seven seniors, I'm going to really miss them, you know, because they were the foundation for these underclassmen. And, you know, it was a group that no matter what the score was, they never would quit. Yeah, I, I watched the state championship game, and 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 I and I'm sorry. Let me go back a little bit for those watching this and don't really know much about what we're talking about. Coach Featherstone's team played for the two A state championship uh, for the North Carolina High School Athletic Association against a team uh, out of Pitt County, North Carolina, named Armville Central, who had their point guards committed to NC State. So they they really had a, a battle. Of the final score, folks, was 113 to 98. That's the most points a losing team has ever scored to not win a state championship. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, that's the most points ever scored in a state championship combined in history. Yes, that was the most ever in a state championship. And, you know, and had you told me we scored 98 and lose, I'd tell you, you'd lost your mind. That's right. If somebody said, hey, Hendersonville scored 98, were they state champs or not? Yeah, I would have been like, oh, I'd have put bet everything I had on it if I was a betting man. Um, but hats off to them that you're, you're exactly right. Watching that game, I was just so inspired. Um, th that, that team that I've been around once a week pretty much since this summer and got the, the privilege of seeing them develop like that. So what, what do you think your most memorable, if you had to pick out one or two most memorable moments from this season, what would they be? Um, the, the, the thing that, overwhelmed me the most was just how close-knit these guys were. I mean, it was like they were happy for – if somebody did something great, it was like they all did it. And, and you know, there's a lot of teams that you may coach that you may have one kid do something outstanding and the rest of the kids are pouting. And this group never did that. I mean, it was all for one and one for all. Yeah, I have to agree. I, I was privileged to be around them with FCA uh, with character talks and just getting to watch practices and things like that. And just it blew me away as a head coach myself for 17 years to to you could coach 50 years and never have a team that tight knit. That was a, a rare quality these days to see. And, you know, even my nephew was on that team and Coach Featherstone was speaking of, you know, seniors that didn't get in a lot. And they're down there. They're the first ones off the bench congratulating him and Towels hit fist bump and what a what a what a fun year to to watch that type of thing um while we're on that topic of basketball i'm gonna give you a chance i know you're scared you might leave somebody out but i do want to give you the opportunity to speak about talk about some of the best players that, that you've ever coached at hendersonville high school all right um i'll start with my as far back as i can go um <laughs> no i when i first got in you know I, I, uh, well, one of the better players that when I first got into the varsity side, you know, I, I had a chance to coach my little brother, you know, it's a rarity that you get to do. And, you know, him and Rayshawn Johnson was a really good crew. Um, had a chance to coach DJ Ingram, uh, Clarence Featherstone, uh, Stephen Clay, Dominique Whiteside, you know, some really special kids, um, Sean Rogers, um, Rashad, I mean, Rashad, Rashad Felton, you know, Carson Redden, Dwight Kennedy, Kenan Wilkins, you know, these guys have been really special and, and, you know, and, and I can't leave off the guys that were behind the scenes. You know, I have having really good players like that. You have to have really good role players and this year. Joel and Alex were some unsung heroes that rarely got their press, you know, about the things that they did and, you know, and they accepted their roles on this team. And, you know, for you to be successful, you have to have kids like that. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I used to tell people they, you know, when I was coaching football, and sometimes people would interview me before the season. They say, "Coach, uh, how do you have winning records so so much?" And and I took pride, and I think what you just said, similar uh, philosophy is I, I felt like that if I took my average players and made them better than everybody else's average players, you're going to win a lot more games and win games you're not supposed to. And it's just like you said. And, and he said, Joel and Alex, that's Joel Christner and Alex Lemons. They're seniors at Hendersonville High School. And that boy, they were fun to watch. They battled underneath and they did a lot of the diving and scraping and scrapping on the floor that you don't see on a stat sheet. So, yeah, appreciate you sharing that, Coach. Um, there are some unique cultures with the Hendersonville High School basketball program that, that anybody that's been around it for any amount of time, you start noticing. Could you speak to some of those unique cultures that – the, the, the basketball program there at Hendersonville has? Um, first one I want to talk about, you know, when we go to away games, you know, we're going to be distinguished. And when you see us come in, people are like, whoa, who is that? Because we at Hendersonville, we are going to dress alike, and every kid is going to be dressed in khakis, white shirt, tie, and a blazer. And the blue blazers, I go out and – buy and get cleaned every year, you know, and they, they have our, our school crest in, uh, in, um, uh, stitched in on them. So, you know, it, the kids really enjoy doing that because that, that makes them look a, a little bit classier than everybody else. Um, and then we have the candy stripe pants that have been around since, since we were little kids going to watch, People like Bo Wynn and those guys play and, you know, and those pants have been around forever. And, you know, the kids love wearing those and they love whenever they pop the, pop the sides loose, you know, they love the tearaway sound, you know, and those kids that come up when they finally get the voice, they're like, I couldn't wait to do this. And so they love ripping those pants off. So yeah, that's that's my favorite. Uh, when I was a little kid, and those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Hendersonville wears basically candy stripe red and white warm up pants, and I think there's two major colleges that have done that for years. I think Indiana, and I think the University of Tennessee, and they have the stripe, the red and white at Indiana, and the orange and white at Tennessee, and it is impressive. And I did even at the state championship game, just watching the kids. They were just having a blast. Even the last game of the year. Are ripping those things off and and the blue blazers coach i gotta admit when when i go to watch you guys play it in a away venue and if i'm there when you guys get in during a jv game and watch you guys walk through the gym it is so impressive they come through with those gym bags and that blue blazer on and the necktie you know most teams come in with hoodies and t-shirts and 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 i'm not knocking that but it just really does look impressive and i'll tell you something else coach if you could speak to something else that i noticed I noticed in the state championship game, Farmville Central's kids, every kid had on a different pair of tennis shoes, different colors, height, low, it didn't matter. I noticed you guys had on the exact same pair of shoes, exact same pair of socks. Is that a tradition as well? Yes, um, you know, we, we, we did that when I was in school, and it looks a lot more uniformed. You know, you want everybody, you know, you don't want anybody to – outdo the other so if I allowed those guys to come in with their own shoes we'd have pink shoes we'd have all different color shoes so to alleviate me going crazy and pulling out what little bit of hair I had on my head I would I you know we made it to where everybody is the same you know and so we go out and I order the uh socks and then I order the team shoes and they just have to pay pay that back to the school, but that way everybody looks the same and it, it looks more uniform. Yeah, that, that, that really does look sharp. And I, you just don't see that anymore. I really think that sets you guys apart. And, and little things like that contribute to that lure, that, that allure of success that you see at Hendersonville High has in basketball. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. Coach, you were coaching football with me. Uh, back in the day when I, when I was still coaching. And, and you know Steve McNamara. He's our area director for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And you probably remember when he, when he first got into this area and, and started doing some things with our football team. And we invited him in. And, 
doing character talks and he helps, started helping us set up pregame meals and, and help us develop students as leaders through Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, how do you think that FCA, I mean, for those of you who don't know, Coach Featherstone is bold about God. He let me come into his program uh, and, and have voluntary devotion times, team talks with, it, with his team. Coach Featherstone is bold like that. There are a lot of coaches that don't want Jesus and God in their programs. Uh, not in Henderson County. We're so blessed with, with most of our coaches. But, Coach, how would you say that that, that, that aspect of, of us coming in with character talks and devotions and, and teaching kids to pray and, and that whole empowering student athletes to, to lead an FCA, do you think that's had any kind of impact on your culture? Um, or enhanced your culture any on your team? Yes, um, I have a I have a lot of players on my team that are regular for, uh, or go to church regular and and they enjoy having somebody come in and do a devotion. You know, like before we got ready to play, you know, I guess it was the 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 game to go to the state championship. My guys were like, "Hey, coach, is Coach Lauder gonna come in and do a devotion?" You know, and, and and they want that, you know. It's not that I said it. The guys were like, Coach, is he coming? And so I, I ran out and I was like, hey, man, the guys want you to come in. And, and, and I have so many guys that follow God. And, you know, this is a great chance for you to reach out and Steve to reach out to the kids. And, you know, it, it it's amazing that you have kids that look to – or want to hear more about God. And I love the fact that it's uh, the end game for FCA is we want it to be student led and kids initiate. And when they came out and you waved me down, I was getting ready to announce that game and you waved me down. I, I luckily, I always have one in my back pocket. You know me, Coach Featherstone. And, you know, I came home, man, I teared up almost. I told my wife, I said, you know, those kids asked Coach Featherstone to come and Get me so that tells a little bit about the character of your team. That's things people don't see, and I think that's uh, that's special. Something else you had a couple of seniors on your team this year uh, that approached me, Wyatt Marlowe and Jake Ross, and they approached me about wanting to get equipped to do uh, team talks and devotions with their, where they lead their team in that. And and I know that those two took turn about. And, and did that. And I think that if I'm not mistaken, you even sat in on some of those devotions coach. How does it feel as a head basketball coach, having a couple of seniors be bold enough to get up in front of their teammates and share devotions with them? I mean, can you speak to that? Um, these guys, it wasn't only that I sat in every, every Wednesday during our workout sessions, they, that was their devotion day. So they would alternate. One would do it one week, one would do it the other. And, and I actually sat in every one of them. You know, it wasn't none that I missed. So I sat there and I listened to them, and, and they incorporated, you know, not only the players, but he, they even asked me things about the uh, scripture that they read. So it was really – it really brightened my heart to see my kids leading that way, you know, because it, it's hard for kids to speak about God at that age, for them to – step up and lead the team and you know and it 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 just it nearly brought tears to my eyes to see those guys willing to do that yeah i mean that's bold and when i was that age marvin i uh, coach i don't know if i'd have been bold enough to do that i mean i used to teach sunday school and i'd have 40 year old adults and you you call on somebody to pray you can hear crickets you know head down no nobody's wanting to close it out but you get a 17 18 year old two boys uh uh, leading their team like that, you know, and I, I was privileged to sit in on a couple of those too. And just, you know, I, I just think that, that that's gotta be special as a coach uh, when you see that, you know, thank you. And for see those guys, the preparation they put in to have it ready for that, for that practice, you know, they would, they would either start the practice with it or we'd end practice with it. But every Wednesday they would faithfully be ready to give their, their devotion. And, you know, I, Hats off to you and Steve for leading those guys to that. Yeah, and it, it only starts if, if the coach is uh, if the coach is willing, and we thank you for allowing us in. And and I think that uh, you know that that type of thing can benefit 
kids, coaches, myself, anyone uh, for the rest of their life, it, it, such life skills. It, because as you know, coaching one is coaching's one third skill. Uh, the other two thirds of the heart and the mind. And I, I really appreciated watching how you got to those kids' heart this year and, and, and how you had them thinking critically, Coach, and, and you had the other two thirds of coaching down pat this year. So I, I thank you for that. Let's, let's change gears a little bit. I, 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 I coached with you before you were a head basketball coach on the varsity. And I just wanted to ask you, how do you think your coaching has adapted and adjusted since taking over the head coaching job, as you reflect back since you started coaching, how would you say your coaching has adapted and changed? Um, when I first got the job, you know, I, in my mind, I was thinking as a drill sergeant, it was, yeah, yeah, rah, you know. And, you know, the more I sat back and looked at it, you know, the calmer I've become, you know. And, and I feel like the kids aren't on pins and needles as much. You know, when I'm calm, they're calm, and and you could tell by the way the kids played this year that you know they were they were relaxed, I was relaxed, and you know it made for a great environment for the kids, and you know, and we all enjoyed that. You no, know, yeah, that's been fun watching too. Uh, you know, you know me and Coach Gash, uh, Eric Gash is a good friend of ours, and when Coach Featherstone first became a head coach, you know, Coach Gash, you know, teasing somebody, like, you got the gas face out there. <laughs> Coach Feathers, you just beat. And I, I really, I, they say a, a team takes on the persona of their head coach, and that championship game spoke volumes. I mean, you're, if your kids, they go down and, and get a, a crazy dunk, and you know what your kids do? They're getting out of the net, beating them back down for a layup. Didn't phase them. And that, that's, that team didn't flinch all year long. We, you know, we used that verse, Philippians 128, not flinching or dodging in the slightest in front of your opponents. And, man, that was – that was Hendersonville, and all year long, and and the the co you could tell the coach never quit and had heart, and it trickled down. The kids never quit, had heart, and they would think in times of adversity. I would see instead of freaking out, they would think and come up with solutions, and it was just 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 fun to watch. You seem so much more relaxed, but still intense. I know that sounds crazy, but that's coming from the outside looking in. Uh, how do you what? What would you say has been the, the biggest thing other than you say, all right, I'm just relaxing, to overcome obstacles and, 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 and challenges in your coaching? Um, you know, I, I, felt, I felt like sometimes I was uptight and my players played uptight. And, you know, and I felt like, you know, they're feeding off of my energy. And so the more I became – around the kids and, you know, they, they put me at ease. And so they played at ease and it, 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 I guess it was a, a give and take situation where, you know, when I first became a coach, you know, it was, ah, I'm going to be in charge of, you know, whereas this group of guys that I had this year, I would call like my leaders and say, Hey, what do you think about this? You know, and, and gave them more, of it being theirs instead of just mine. You know, I, I I accepted what the kids would say, like in the state championship game, um, I think I had pulled Alex out and Dwight came to me and he was like, coach, put me in the middle of that zone. I can handle that. And I put him right there and two possessions in a row, we went down and scored. And, you know, I put more trust in them than I had been in the past, you know, and I, I trusted what they were asking me to do and they trusted what I asked them to do. Man, that's huge. And that's stuff coach Featherstone's talking about. And I have to put a plug in real quick, but you see behind me, anybody watching this FCA coaches academy.com that that's a free course. And it talks about three dimensional coaching and, and coach Featherstone personifies that where it's not only skills, but it's coaching the mind and the heart. And what you just heard is second and third dimension. What coach, Featherstone's talking about where you give the kids ownership of the team as well and value what they have to say and it can it can pay dividends and coach that's a great example of that um, before we get off here I always like to let you give advice advice to two groups if you want to coach advice to parents of, of basketball players and advice to young players that might be watching this that might be youth age or middle school age or 
or JVs and, and getting ready to come up and play varsity basketball, what would you like to say to parents and players? Um, you know, to parents, um, be supportive of coaches and other players. You know, it's I know we all love our kids, but always support the other players and you know, cheer cheer for everybody and make it make it be for the team and not just your kid, you know, because sometimes in my coaching career I've ran across parents that have only, you know, if their kid wasn't doing great, then they didn't care about what the rest of the team did, you know, and the kids take on what they what they see their parents doing. Oh wow, that's powerful. That's, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I can see that. It makes me want to go back and you know, my daughter was pole vault and how I acted sometimes. You know, we're all guilty of that a little bit, Coach. Aren't yes, we? that's great advice. Uh, you know, cheer on everybody. I, you know, I, and I watched this year with your team, and I was a, I was privileged enough to watch a lot of basketball teams this year, and. Boy, your your kids took on the the posture of pulling for each other like nobody I've ever seen. So, well, coach, it's been a it's been a pleasure to have you on our first episode of this. Um, we we look forward to hearing from you again sometime in the near future. And if we can ever do anything for you, you know, you just ask. And thank you for allowing FCA into your program for putting God as a priority in your program, coach. And we wish you much continued success. Do you mind if I pray for us to, to get out of here? And I'll let you say a few things after the prayer to get out of here. I appreciate it. I, I, I need all the prayer I can get, big dog. All right. Well, I'll pray real quick. And then uh, we'll, we'll get off here, Coach. Dear Lord, thank you for a coach like Coach Marvin Featherstone that is bold enough uh, to include you, God, in his basketball program, dear Lord, in a, in a time when it's easy to get canceled in the cancel culture, dear Lord, that, that Coach Featherstone would make this available to all of his kids, required of none, dear Lord. Uh, thank you for the wonderful job he did this year and the impact that he made on those kids that will last a lifetime. In Jesus' name, amen. Coach, anything else before I click this button and get off of here? Uh, for the kids that's coming out, don't just wait till it's time for the season. You need to be in that gym as much as you can or on the uh, playground. Um, but like I said, I, I'm i looking for any and all kids that want to play. Yeah, that's great advice. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say my, one of my favorite quotes from Jerry Rice. You know, he always said, today I will do things nobody else wants to do, so tomorrow I can obtain things other people can't obtain. And that's what Coach is talking about. And that's why he's a championship caliber coach. And that's why he's a three-dimensional coach. And, and Coach, we'll go ahead and get off of here and appreciate it again. Thank you.